Is starting an R44 helicopter harder than starting your Honda Civic? Well, actually it is. It's a lot harder than starting a Honda Civic and it's harder than on Microsoft Flight Sim. So today, let's look at how we're gonna start an helicopter. And actually, the only similarity is turning a key. Hello again ladies and gents and welcome to another YouTube video with Antheleon Helicopters here in Long Beach, California. Uh, today we're actually going to do a, a slightly different video which is going to be the start up and shut down of the uh, Robinson R44 helicopter. Uh, we really wanted to do this uh, just to start going over a little more depth on a lot of the, you know, the actual procedures of the helicopters. Um, we want to put a little bit of the, the why behind the what so that we're not just telling you you know what to do We're telling you why we're doing it as well Which you know we like to think is one of the reasons that stands our company out is that we do a lot more Explanation a lot more depth and breadth to your training rather than you know This is what the regulations in the book tell you go and do it So you know bear with it today if it's a little bit uh, there's a little bit too much information for you We'll try I'll try and keep it succinct as possible uh, But understand you know there is a lot of reason behind why we do things and hopefully you get a lot more out of it when we actually uh, start to explain a little bit more how everything works. Again, um, if you want to subscribe to the channel, please do. And we look forward to you know presenting more and more videos over time. Uh, but this one again today is the startup and shutdown with a little bit of hovering of the Robinson R44 helicopter. All right. Let's get going then. So 3 Sierra Alpha here, 443 Sierra Alpha is a Raven 2. Uh, just to make that clear, it's a fuel injected R44 and not a uh, Raven 1 or a Clipper 1, which are carburetted. So they are slightly different. Uh, and we do have a Garmin G500 in this one, uh, which means that the instrument binnacle is slightly different than a traditional seven or a nine hole panel. Um, so things are in slightly different places. However, you know, all the instruments are still there. Uh, that we need to know and so there is that generic aspect in there so let's get going on this checklist we'll assume that you've done all of your uh, internal external pre-flight uh, work so we're literally getting in uh, right now with um, instructors and uh, you know starting the aircraft up uh, we do have dual controls in here right now um, obviously there's only me sitting in here but nevertheless uh, the dual controls are in and they will always be in for when we're doing anything um, with the instructor and student um, so let's just start on the checklist. Always make sure you've got your checklist handy. I find it useful just to put it underneath my leg uh, so all times I can see where it is. I'll keep my hands free to do the necessary checks on the aircraft. Seat belts, number one on the list. Seat belts are fastened. We have a harness here, four point harness, actually five point harness, but I don't want to use this one in the middle right now. Uh, in the R44 on this helicopter, uh, obviously you can get traditional pull across your lap, but this one here is a harness, so make sure properly secured. Uh, it's reasonably tight as well, and obviously just be aware of the release mechanism, which this is turned counterclockwise to release. All right, we have the fuel shutoff valve in between the seats here, so very different to the R22, actually is by the collective here. Make sure that fuel shutoff valve is on. Uh, obviously we need it to be on in the event of an accident when that we can obviously if we do have anything in terms of the uh, potential engine fire we can turn it off uh, to stop that fuel flow going which is a safety precaution but for now it needs to be on otherwise the engine won't start uh, which is not much use for us of course okay and it says on on it as well um, you know we'll be able to get a shot of it later for you so you can just check out where it is but fundamentally as part of this pre-flight just and uh, pre-start sorry just get used to where the controls are in the aircraft that you're flying all right, cyclic collective frictions are off. So what we're going to do now is check for full travel free uh, on the cyclic and collective. Um, so we'll start with the pedals first, full travel left, full travel right. Uh, just making sure that there's no binding and whatever reason we have full travel uh, with them. We'll do the same with the collective. We'll pull it all the way up, pull it all up, push it all the way down. Uh, obviously, I know that you know hydraulics are off, so it's heavy, but that's just the way it goes right now. Same with the cyclic, left, right, forward, back. And then really important, do them all together, just to see that there's no binding in the mixing units for whatever reason. That could be a variety of reasons, but 
you know, just move them all together gently. Don't overexert because you haven't got the hydraulics on right now. And once we're finished, so very, very, you know, one of my, my tips anyway, is make sure that you neutralize the pedals after this. Uh, I always put the ball of my foot between the two pedals on my right foot and then push my left foot back so I can put the cyclic right between my legs like that so it doesn't go anywhere and I'll put the checklist under my right leg like that right so I can leave both hands free to do everything else. Get into the habit of using that right hand if you can to do the cyclic friction so that you can keep your left hand at all time on the collective. Become very important when everything's running um, so you can always guard the throttle and guard any inadvertent vertical movement with that collective. Slide that left hand back, push the friction on again. So now frictions are all on, uh, on the cyclic and collective. Check full travel free. So unlike a motorbike, we're gonna roll this away from us to make sure that we're fully open, then all the way closed towards us. Pull it all the way into the detent. Now this is really, really, really important thing to remember here. Um, one thing that will ruin a new uh, an engine of a helicopter is a cold start with throttle uh, unloaded with uh, the clutch engaged. A uh, common mistake for students to make is to start it when they think they've got a closed throttle but actually they haven't. You'll always know that you have a closed throttle if you hold this in the detent, uh, the throttle in the detent, you'll always know you have a full throttle. And if you just release it from the detent, it will be at zero throttle. So when you're, when you're doing your check, just make sure that you're doing that. But on start, make sure that you have uh, that throttle in the detent. There's nothing worse for an aircraft than a cold engine. All right, so we've done full travel free with the throttle. Um, we're just gonna cycle through the rotor brake right now. So on would be there and off would be there. Worth noting that there are a few things in the ROMs and the helicopters, they're kind of like fail safes, if you will, that the engine simply won't start on the ignition when you go and start it if certain things are still engaged. The rotor brake is one of them. There are obvious reasons, you know, you don't want to try and start the engine with the rotor brake on, it's not going to be any good for it in terms of friction. Uh, the other one is the clutch, so there are a few of them, clutch circuit breaker, things like that, but rotor brake is one, so just make sure it's fully in. Landing light is off, which is on the center of the cyclic control here on the 44. Avionic switch, we don't have one in the 44 on this aircraft, so not really an issue. Clutch is off, remember always down, down, down is always off, the guard is open, the clutch switch is down. Bear in mind the guard can be open and the clutch can still be engaged, like that. Always make sure that that clutch switch is down when you are before engagement. We do not want to start or try to start the aircraft uh, with the clutch engaged. It won't anyway, and you'll be wondering what's going on. Altimeter, let's just set it to field elevation right now. Obviously, we don't have an altimeter setting, a current one at the airport. Uh, let's wait. We'll wait to the ATIS for that. Um, but right now, we'll set it at about 40 feet uh, here in the Colesman window. Uh, it's actually, you know, 3030 right now. So we'll see how accurate that is when we get the uh, setting from the tower. All right, and then the hydraulic and governor switches are off. So, um, sorry, hydraulic and governor switches are on. So hydraulic on the cyclic here, we push it up to make sure it's on and the governor switch is always uh, towards you. All right, that's before starting engine. Now things are gonna get a little bit more interesting with the engine starting and run up. Um, please forgive me if a couple of things are slightly, I go back a little bit because a lot of things are happening very, very quickly together, especially once we start. I will always go back and explain what we did though uh, to make sure that uh, everything, nothing else gets missed out here, but things do happen a little bit, bit quickly, so bear with me. All right, so throttle closed. We know about that one, right? Make sure it's in that detent, make sure it's off. Battery strobe switches are coming on. Master battery on, strobe on. If we were at night, we turn the nav lights on, but we're not, we're in the daytime right now, so we don't do that. Area clear. Now, you know, we just do this because we're on an active ramp here. We've got students walking around all the time and maintenance personnel. We just don't want anyone walking behind the aircraft or about to walk behind an aircraft when they're about to start up. So just shouting clear, it might sound hokey, but it just lets them know, hey, you know, don't go behind the aircraft right now. Go in front of the aircraft just to keep safety. So clear like so all right now we're going to go mixture full rich we've got to prime this aircraft first it is a fuel injected one so we put that by pushing the mixture in full rich just keep hold of the guard easy thing to lose just don't do that all right now we're going to prime by going over the key over to prime hold it for about eight seconds one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand four one thousand five one thousand six one thousand seven one thousand eight one thousand this varies a lot if it's warm aircraft or it's a cold aircraft, but for right now it's a cold aircraft, so a good solid eight seconds works for us. Then pull the mixture back out again. Now we should have enough fuel in the engine primed to uh, at least get this thing started. Once it actually does catch, 
uh, then we're going to have to push the mixture in pretty quickly to keep it running. So things are going to happen a little bit quicker now. Essentially what I'm going to do is key the starter on with my left hand on the collective. As soon as I hear that engine catch, I'm going to feed the mixture fully rich all the way in at that point and once it's all the way in i'll put the guard back on stabilize the rpm look for a couple of warning lights out like the starter light's going to be out all pressures coming up uh, things like that but we'll talk through that once we're going all right so here we go all right so it sounds like a bit of a mac truck to start with but now that we're going guard is on rpm is stable 50 to 16 Starter light is out, so we're going to engage the clutch and engage the alternator and put the headset on. All right, so I'll just go over that again because obviously it was probably a little bit on the noisy side there. So as soon as the engine caught, push the mixture in, make sure the guard was installed, make sure the RPM stabilized 50 to 60. Uh, we're looking for straight away that the starter light goes out. Uh, we don't want that starter to be keep turning. Obviously, if it does, there's something wrong with it, some sort of short circuit, shut the aircraft down. Do not let that thing keep going. It will just destroy itself. Uh, we've done. We, that was out. That's great. Uh, we've also made sure that we've got positive uh, oil pressure uh, there, which obviously is very, very important. Um, you know, we want to make sure that well, there's obviously there's enough oil, there's no leaks, there's something going on, and then the sending units working. We need a 25 psi minimum, which is uh, you know around about where they're just above the red line here. Uh, it's there for a good reason. Uh, obviously, with a cold aircraft, uh, the oil is very viscous, very thick, so we'll actually be running pretty high oil pressure. We are right now. We're running at like about 110 uh, psi right now. As it as it warms up, the, uh, you know, the oil will warm up and it'll become less viscous uh, and we'll be in a better spot. Okay, we also need to make sure that the blades were turning. Sounds obvious, um, but you know that they cannot turn for a variety of reasons. Number one, you forgot to engage the clutch. Uh, number two, the blades might—sorry, uh, the, the clutch belts might be too loose. Uh, in which case, you know, they'll turn, but they'll take a while to turn. You know, you don't want the belt, belts too loose in that regard. Um, there might as well be a short circuit, right? You know, helicopters vibrate a lot. The R44 with its semi-rigid system is probably one of the worst offenders for vibration, especially if the track and balance isn't good. Uh, and a lot of these uh, little circuits can, uh, you know, pop out and uh, they're not just going to short themselves sometimes. So we've had that in the past where there's nothing wrong with the clutch. Uh, we just have to go and uh, replace the fuse in the back because it's shaking itself loose or the wire going into the back of the fuse is shaking itself loose. Either way, you know, it can all uh, be a problem with your clutch. So once your blades are turning within about five seconds, uh, we should be good in there. All right, so now we're just going to, we're just looking uh, and making sure double checking on our checklist the whole time so we've just gone through uh, setting the engine RPM 50 to 60 uh, which we are done we've engaged the clutch the blades are turning the alternator switch is on uh, alternator obviously the alternator is there to uh, uh, provide power to the battery and recharge the battery when the engine is running you're looking for a, a positive charge on the am am ammeter here uh, so to know that that uh, battery is being charged if it's not it's going to run out really quick that battery and uh, we don't want to take off there we've only got about 30 minutes the time, uh, probably less with this Garmin 500, uh, so we certainly don't want to take off if we see that uh, alternator light still on and, and the ammeter not working. Uh, remember, always cross-check, right? If you've got an ammeter with a not charge, with, with, you know, it doesn't look like it's charging, it's on negative charge, uh, but your alternator light's off, you're thinking, well, something's going wrong here. One of these gauges is reading slightly wrong, so always be cross-checking and don't just take whatever you see for granted. Uh, you know, there could be other reasons for it, and it just helps have more of a working knowledge of actually what's going on, because if, if, if certain indications contradict each other, uh, always ask those questions and think, well, why is that contradicting itself right there? What is going on? It can be, again, just a loose wire. It could be even something really stupid, like the bulb is loose here. All these bulbs in the console, you can twist them out and replace them. Uh, you know, it can be really something silly like that. Or the, the contact has gone in the bulb on the, on the console. So, you know, just be aware and cross-check and don't just believe everything you see is probably the message there. Okay, so the clutch light should be out. Uh, you know, Robinson says it has up to 90 seconds to engage. It should be faster than that, but you're allowed up to 90 seconds. If it, if it doesn't go out and it's still engaging, then again, something's wrong. Uh, you might have to pull the breakers or something like that, uh, which is not going to be any good. So, 
Okay, so obviously now we're, we're up to uh, the clutch light is out. We're going to roll the throttle away from us between 60 and 70. Something you're going to get very, very used to uh, just before we started the engine up. Uh, it's just making sure that, you know, get used to the feel of the circuit breakers down here uh, by the passenger side, especially the clutch um, start circuit breaker. It should always have uh, a red band around it. Uh, it. It does that mainly because so that you, if you have a clutch issue in flight, uh, the you know, your light comes on and stays on that without actually physically looking at that clutch uh, you can uh, just pull the breaker to stop whatever it's doing whether it's uh, you know expanding or contracting because obviously you don't know all you know is the lights on um, so you should be able to do that by just touch alone and that's what it's there for so just get used to that so you can you know you know what it feels like and uh, you can keep your eyes on the horizon and still fly the aircraft predominantly while still making sure you can pull that breaker uh, if required all right so now we're on this uh, um, we're at the 60 to 70, you know, we've actually checked again that all of these breakers are in, nothing has popped uh, at all, you know, if you need to do a visual inspection, you can, but you should be pretty obvious if something's popped uh, on start if there's a surge of any time right now. And we're just waiting to make sure these gauges come in the green here before we do any more checks. Um, in the interim, you can listen to the ATIS, we're not going to do that right here today, but you'll listen to the ATIS, then you will get to verify uh, what your Colson window should be set for your pressure altitude in there, and you'll notice the winds and everything else that's going on at the airport, the no tams and all the other good stuff that you need uh, to be able to talk about with. On the G500 here, we're just going to set up, we've set up the barometric pressure up here to match what we've got on our regular um, altimeter uh, here, so they're both matched up together. Now you're going to look at your radios, you know, make sure your radios are set up where they need to be. You've got your standby in there as well as your comm that you need. Uh, if you've got two comms, you know, again, think ahead. I tend to use uh, ATISs for the COM2, whereas the towers um, or the common frequencies for the COM1, so I can always keep a frequency active while I'm listening to ATIS. Just a good uh, habit to have, so you're never completely going dark on the towers. Um, obviously, if you've got one radio, you don't have much choice with that, but luckily the 44s, most 44s I've come across always have two. Uh, and just to verify your transponder is set to VFR at 1200. Um, this is an instrument ship, so it's not uncommon to come back with uh, all types of different settings on its uh, score code, which you'll need to just make sure that you pass the VFR and make sure that they're rare. The tower will always remind you, of course, it will tell you to score the VFR uh, if it catches you with it. Okay, so we're going on now, we're all warm, we're going to roll it up to 75 to do the mag check uh, right now. So look, this is definitely a bit of, uh, you know, why behind the what. Uh, the magnetos are here on the R44 and the R22 to provide spark to the spark plugs. Um, and those spark plugs obviously then drive the, the combustion process in the cylinders. We have redundancy built in. Um, we have uh, in the R44, obviously, we have upper and lower spark plugs. So uh, we've got 12 overall. And the, upper, the left and the right mag control the upper and the lower, respectively. Uh, you know, it's redundancy at the end of the day. So uh, if you lose one of the mags, you've still got uh, the other mag and still got the power to all cylinders. It's not going to be as pretty and as efficient. Um, it's going to wave this guy past here. Uh, but it will still work. So what we're going to do here is we're going to actually switch each one of them off. When I click left, it means actually, you know, it's just running on the left and the right's off. Uh, and we're looking for a certain amount of dropped so that, hey, yeah, we know we've only got uh, half the spark plugs working, but everything's still going, and we're allowed a certain tolerance of how much we lose. Common practice here, which I always teach, is to go two uh, to the left, right? So we'll go from both. Uh, we'll stabilize, roll up with our left hand here to 75% on the throw. And we're going to go to two clicks over. We're going to go left and then right. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Looking for less than a 7% drop. It didn't really move at all, which is great. Stabilize again at 75. And then we're going to go one click over to left and then back onto both. The reason I do that that way and not go one click to left first is that if we do it, let's just, you know, hypothetically speaking here, see what would ha might happen. So you go one click to left, you're in a hurry, you go great, click back to both. You go two clicks to right, you're like, great, wonderful. You just click one click back again. You think you're on both and you leave it. You're actually on the left right now. So it's an easy thing to do if you're in a hurry, uh, which you don't want to do, because now you're just operating on one mag and you may not notice. So, you know, just do it the other way around and then you'll always know that you're going to go back to both. and just double verify, don't leave yourself on one mag, which is a really common mistake to do. Also don't crank it over too much, because you'll switch it off and turn the engine off and look like a complete nincompoop uh, in the process. Um, so just be careful how, how, quick, how fast you turn that uh, dial over for the left and the right mags. If in doubt, do the mag check twice. 
Uh, sometimes it makes, you know, the, the plugs get a bit fouled, so you might have to burn it off a little bit. We'll talk about that in later videos. Uh, but, you know, just make sure you've got a good mag check, because you can't take off with crappy mag checks. All right. Mag checks are good. Now we're going to check the spread clutch here. So we're looking for the uh, engine and rotor. Uh, we're going to actually, for this one, I'm going to roll it up to, personally, like rolling up to about 80%, and then I just crank that throttle off, looking for a good needle split in a centrifugal clutch. Very, very important for auto rotations. Uh, I didn't get a great one right there, so I'm going to roll it up a little bit more. Each aircraft is different here. So we're going to roll it up literally to 80 till about the governor's about to take it, then split it, and actually that was better. We got a good split. We have to make sure that in the event of an um, emergency, if we need to auto rotate, for whatever reason, that we do get a positive split between those needles so that the engine will disengage from the main rotor and the main rotor can freewheel and get us down in auto rotation. If you're not seeing that, you can't go anywhere. You should always be very, very cautious of that and make sure that that is working. Um, and if it's not, just go and get a mechanic to check. You know, sort out the problems on the ground. Don't sort them out in the air. If, you, if you're in doubt, sort out on the ground. All right, from time to time, again, just quickly check down at your cycling position to stop this vibrating so much because, um, you know, it's not a 22, the cycling's further forward in the 44, so just keep it centered to try and stop this vibrating. All right, so now we're going to close and latch the doors. I'm going to turn on the air conditioning because it is as hot as crap in here. Uh, so we're going to get ready. A lot of the other things here I've memorized. We'll talk through it in a little bit right now. Um, I'm going to stow this checklist because obviously once I've closed the doors, uh, I'm going to start doing things. Uh, I need both hands to do it. So I'm going to stow the checklist at this point. All right, I'm going to close my door. Hopefully the air conditioning starts kicking in and we don't all fry in here and the GoPros don't fry completely. So we're going to have a quick look at the map chart, the limit map chart, the manifold pressure. Uh, we're at 25 degrees Celsius right now, so we're going to look up here. Uh, max continuous power, we're going to extrapolate here between 22.9 and 23.1, so 23.0 uh, for max continuous. And then for, for max takeoff, uh, which is only five minute rating, so don't just use it forever, uh, it's 2.8 inches, so we'll be at 25.8. Uh, never exceed speed VN is 130 because we are at sea level so all the way up to 40 degrees uh, Celsius we can use it um, so just bear in mind those things think about your other limitations if you've got doors or if you can't go above 100 knots there are other things as well all right now we're going to take the frictions off right now so right hand's taking the cyclic friction off left hand's coming back for the collective friction keeping positive control at all times I've still got my foot neutral on those pedals now I'm going to put both feet on the pedals get myself into a good position to be able to fly and control. All right, positive control on the collective and the cyclic. We're going to do a hydraulics check. Uh, we're just going to switch the hydraulics off with our right thumb, moving it left and right, backwards and forwards, making sure those hydraulics do feel off. If you want to uh, pull up on the collective just a little bit, just be careful, then good. Yeah, we get the low RPM signal on. Um, then that's off. Switch it back on and then verify that it is back on again, that you, for whatever reason, it, it didn't decide to come back on. It did, so we're good. So it's always verification, right? Everything looking good. Good, gauges in the green, pressure and temperature is good. So we're going to take that firm grip of that throttle, roll it up to 80%, the governor will take it. And we're going to go all the way up now into the green. Just keep an eye on those RPMs, they should stabilize in the green together. Uh, the console might shake a bit, obviously, as it is right now, because we haven't picked up yet, so we're still a bit... Clutch may, light may come on and uh, reassert, you know, to retighten as you increase those RPM. Just make sure it's all out. Then just look at your flow, right? Everyone has a different flow. Every aircraft has a different flow. And I mean the flow, just the way you look at instruments. I tend to go from top to bottom. So warning lights are all out. Uh, gauges are all in the green. Fuel is good. Pressure and temperatures are good. Just verify I've got my mags on both, you know, again I should see my manifold pressure setting. If I got both mags on both, I should be on about 12 to 13 inches of manifold pressure. Um, if I switch it to left, then guess what? Oh, look at our manifold pressure, shooting right up there to, you know, 15, so good way of checking. Comms are set, navs are set, everything is looking good, transponders set. All right, last but not least, we're going to pull up on the collective just a little bit here. We're going to override the governor, roll off, make sure you roll off the right way. We're checking the low RPM system. Low RPM light is on. And we get the horn, we must have both for takeoff. You can't have one and not the other, so just make sure you know those regs. RPM stabilized again, clearing left, clearing right, looking good. We're just going to pick her up into a hover. I'm not going to talk about much about the hover right now, other than we're doing it just to simulate taking off. We'll do a hover in the next video right now, so here we are, coming up. Nothing too interesting right now. Now we're just going to sit here like we're flying. All right, and now we're going to just come back down again. 
so that we can just talk about the shutdown. It's going to be a slightly easier shutdown because obviously the aircraft's not too hot, we're not going to have to wait forever to do it, so we're just going to sh take the aircraft down, I'll try my landings here, that's pretty good, beginner's luck as always. Alright, now that we're on the floor, first thing that we do is roll that throttle down, get her out of flight idle, take it all the way down, lower than uh, Governor 80 to 75, that is so, so important, first thing you should do is do that. Just so that you know, if you inadvertently pushed any of the wrong controls, you don't flip us over. Dynamic rollover is so so important to avoid on the pad. But the biggest way of getting uh, out of that circumstance, or at least mitigating it, is get us out of flight. It'll get us down to 75. As soon as you've done that, neutral on the pedals, right foot on the centre of the pedals, left foot back again. Push your left hand back. Put the friction on the collective. Put that cyclic between your knees. Get that right hand over in front of the cyclic. Get the cyclic friction on. Now we're looking good. I'm going to open the door because it's hot as heck in here again. Alright, now once you've got that all stabilised, you can pull the checklist out again. You've got your shutdown procedure here on the bottom. So we're down there with the uh, RPM now. We're going for 60 to 70 percent. I find that close to 70 is better. The squirrel cage of the bag tends to pull in more air at that point and drop it down faster. Frictions are on, CHT drop. Now it doesn't say what we need on here. Um, I always say, you know, try and get it around about 300. Of course on really hot days in the summer, depending on where you are, it might be difficult. If you're in doubt, give it a minute and a half. You know, the, <coughs> the maintenance hobs aren't running right now. This is just engine hobs. Um, so you're not really chewing up too much money in the aircraft, but you know, nothing is worse than an aircraft that doesn't cool properly. So, you know, let's roll it down. We, we've obviously done it, you know, this was never never got very hot in the first place, so we're actually below 300 right now, we're about 280. So what we're going to do is, after you've got that uh, CHT drop, you close the throttle, right? Completely close the throttle, roll it into the detent, then come around with your right hand, disengage the clutch. Now start a timer. If you've got one in, great. Use your watch, count, get 30 seconds on. Uh, the timer. The reason you're doing that is that you want the belts at the back that go on the upper and lower pulley between the engine and the main rotor gearbox drive shaft uh, to to keep you know to loosen up. Right, you want those belts to loosen up so that when you turn the engine off, they're not tight. So you don't uh, overly strain everything. Uh, it just means that you can turn the engine off and the blades will free wheel a lot easier. Um, again, just being nice to the aircraft. These things are not exactly cheap to run and cheap to fix. So be nice to them. So after 30 seconds that we're here, <coughs> now one or two things happen. Either you'll really see it because we've got a needle split here. We'll count to 30. Switch the alternator off just before you're going to do it. Because uh, obviously you're going to turn the engine off and then pull the mixture all the way out. Make sure that that engine does cut out. Put the mixture guard back on. Uh, now obviously the engine is off. We're going to wait another 30 seconds. We want to make sure that the clutch goes out fully before we engage the brake. Uh, just so we don't put more wear on the brake with the clutch engaged. You'll notice we should have the alternator light on now as well, as well as, well as the auxiliary fuel pump light on as well. That should be there um, after you switch the engine off, which they are. So it's all looking good, and your manifold pressure should go back to pretty much whatever the ambient air pressure is right now, which would ironically will match the Boltzmann window on your altimeter pretty much, which it does. Look at that. You know, about 31 inches of manifold pressure and close to well, close to 31 inches in your Boltzmann window. So. It does work. This whole stuff does actually work. All right, now we've got 30 seconds off. Clutch light is out. We're just going to try and pull slowly. Don't yank on that rotor brake because it's flimsy as heck in this thing and it feels like it would snap. And keep, clean, keep that cyclic centered as when these blades slow down. They'll lose centrifugal force. They'll lose their rigidity. If it's windy, they'll start flapping. So just try and keep that cyclic centered as much as you can and just keep them slowing down. You're trying to stop the blades over nose if you can. Uh, you know, you get a bonus if you do and get laughed at if you don't. Uh, so here we are. So I managed to stop them over the nose. Keep the brake on, turn the air conditioning off. Then we're going to turn everything else off. But before I do that, um, Thank you for watching. I hope you all learned everything, something today. Hopefully you got a bit more information rather than just, you know, this is what the checklist says, therefore do it. We're trying to put, like I said, a bit more why behind the what so you have more context uh, of what we're doing and why we're doing it and why it's so important and fundamental as a pilot that you learn as much as you can, that you know far more about it uh, than simply, you know, a, a checklist. Uh, Begin of the day, the more that you know this aircraft, the more that you understand what it all happens and how you can cross-check things, the better and safer pilot you're going to be. Which, let's 
be honest, it is a multi game with everything with flying is coming back at the end of the day. Um, so just to extol the virtue, this is what we do as a company. Uh, how we stand ourselves out as we really, really go into depth with this stuff because we know it is important. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we uh, aim to get one of these out every uh, week or so. And uh, next time we'll probably be looking at hovering and pickups. Uh, we've done hovering, sorry, pickups and set downs. Uh, and then we might get into traffic patterns depending on the next one after that. Uh, hope you all stay well and stay safe out there. And see you later.